It's the use of um, it's about truth seeker. And I guess I'll send this to him since I'm going to talk about him and his channel. Uh, not so much his channel, but a particular video titled The Gnostic Truth. And uh, the same name as his channel. I really like this representation of Gnosticism. I watch over half the video, and I'm not, I'm an Eastern Christian, not Gnostic. Uh, but I have a lot of respect for people who are not are actually Gnostic. They're not neo pagans, and they don't just use the word Gnostic because it's cool or whatever. Uh, I guess I should put "cool" in quotation marks or whatever, but uh, in air quotes. But this guy actually reflects what a Gnostic is like: renunciation of the world. Uh, he's going into vegetarianism and veganism. Uh, he talks about this incarnation, uh, the illusion of the world around, uh, of a coming up of a current apocalypse and a coming apocalypse. Now, Eastern Christianity has things like uh, we believe we have the Gnosis. We believe in layered apocalypses, uh, but he talks with arrogance. And this is that's not to slam him. He talks with he, he talks with arrogance, you know, the assurity of that a Gnostic would speak with. Um, this is I, I I would be dismayed if I heard say, Oh no, I'm not trying to do that. And a despising or even a vitriolic hatred. I'm not saying he's I'm not saying hate as in like neo Nazi hate, but a hatred for other views that they are just enslaving. Uh, they're they're worshipping the Demiurge or centering on the Demiurge or still a slave to the Demiurge. He doesn't use Demiurge, but in Gnostic context you can be like, oh that's what he's talking about. The him being uh, basically I'm a stranger in a strange land, which again Eastern Christianity this applies to as well, but uh, that at one point a his soul or a portion of his soul was in the pleroma, the fullness, the beyond the physical realm, and he wants to return there. Again, he didn't have to say pleroma or um, name the part of him that he thought was going, got to go back, but he was trapped in a world where there's all this illusion and false belief, and that is a theme among almost any form of Christianity, but again, with the Gnostics, it's it's a certain way. The Catholics, it's a certain way. With uh, or to the Western Catholics, Western Papal Catholics, it's a certain way. The Judaizers, it's a certain way. With the Eastern um, Christians, it's a certain way. And well, in the Protestants again, you got whatever you want to list them as. But there's the the we know, they don't know, and as long as they don't have the Gnosis, which again, a lot of this stuff is a uh, misnomer because the ancient Gnostics would have never called themselves Gnostics. There was the, the, the other churches that hated them, that called them know-it-alls, you know, but uh, when you get down to brass tacks, you know, we can use these terms, and I don't mind Gnostics using the term Gnostic, you know, instead, instead of, that's our word for you. You can't use that word, you know, kind of like Homer Simpson on that uh, John Waters episode of The Simpsons. Uh, but it's refreshing to see. There was that one guy talking about Catharism, uh, who was, and, and I wanted to get, do you know anything? I mean, anything that he believes is what the Cathars believe, which is what the ancient Gnostics believe. Or people who claim to be Gnostics that are. I mean, an anti-Pauline Gnostic, how the hell do you get, I mean, I actually, at the beginning of YouTube, before there was a lot of Gnostic stuff out there, there was actually people who were basically Wiccan, who disliked Paul and claimed Gnosticism was real Christianity before Paul corrupted it. What? 
or people, and, and later Gnostics would, well, let me say what it is and I'll say later. Uh, the corruption of Sophia into a goddess or this and that. And later Gnostics would do that. You know, there was later forms of what get called Valentinianism or Coloridianism, which would transfer, they would have to transfer that feminine quality into a goddess, which then you had the Virgin Mary being the goddess of the Coloridians. But there's the arrogance, there's the sectarian not uh, sectarianism not in sects but in those who know those who don't know and uh, the being of an apocalyptic creature in the renunciation of the world the idea that uh, this world is alien and foreign the dichotomy between the, the physical and the spiritual spiritual being the best and the physical world being either corrupted or totally evil or you know and just a facade so I I mean I'm not going to agree with them on a lot of things but it is refreshing to see people who take the label Gnostic who actually are honestly Gnostic now maybe not everything that they say is Gnostic, I would agree with it being Gnostic, but it's not just a, well, I believe in the God and the Goddess and the Earth and I worship nature and I'm Gnostic. When did the Gnostics ever worship nature? They never did. They're like this guy, they, no, we're, we, this is just, this is all going to die around us, and uh, when our mortal, when our mortal coil is shed, we'll go off to somewhere else. And even though uh, in no ancient Gnostic texts we get reincarnation, I can, if they want to believe in transmigration of the soul, fine, because Gnostics are essentially Platonists and Neoplatonists. It's fine. I don't mind that. But it is, this guy is a, the, the Gnostic truth just from the first third, two thirds of this video is one of the one of the few people on here who I can honestly say, well they're Gnostic just like James up in Deer's box he's Gnostic of that guy about the Cathars uh, I think I had one of these videos over there yeah John Bynahan uh, he goes on about the Cathars and all this stuff and and what what writings what real writings do we have left of the Cathars? And even if you have writings left, you still have to interpret those writings. Especially with Gnosticism, you have things like the secret teachings. So usually, what they wrote down wasn't the most important stuff. The most important stuff went through an oral chain or through a different master. And this is where Gnostics might talk about gurus or uh, certain teachers. So that's my, uh, I don't know, I guess my little boost for checking, or, I ha I think I have to actually, or there's something in the area to, you know, at least recognize people for what they are. At least this is a channel where people can actually see what the outcomes of Gnosticism are. I, I can't say that completely. So you haven't watched every one of these videos. But it is refreshing to actually see people who are Gnostic, uh, who, who have the label Gnostic, who are Gnostic, instead of people who have the label Gnostic and are neo-pagans, or whatever else. Sometimes they claim to be Satanists that are Gnostics. It's really ridiculous. You know, I mean, I, I I get it. Yeah, the serpent in the tree, and the serpent was actually Christ, and the God is the demiurge. But you're not, you're believing the demiurge is the Satan or the the Archon, the wicked angel that screwed the earth up is is the bad guy. So. Well, that's my rambling video. Take it easy.